for Sage 100. And we've been getting a lot of questions about the Magento uh, e-commerce solution and Sage 100 integration. I am going to start with a couple housekeeping notes. There is a question mark and a hand next to your name on the webinar pane. If you should have a question throughout the presentation, we just encourage you to click on that question mark button and a dialog box will open up and you can key in your question and we're going to reserve the questions until uh, the end of the presentation. And so just like I said, we're going to be talking about an e-commerce solution for Sage 100. Uh, integration with Magento. We have uh, Nick Young, a senior ERP consultant with Surdy Pro Solutions, joined by Andy Tatayan, founder of Surdy Pro Solutions, is with us as well. And from Starship, we have Caroline Walsh, Walsh VP of Marketing and Sales. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Surdy Pro Solutions e-link and Starship. And Surdy Pro Solutions has been developing integrations for Sage 100, Sage 500, and Sage ERP X3 for uh, years now. They have a few integrations, and this one is a very popular one. It's the integration with Magento. And V Technologies has been uh, working with the Sage channel and Sage 100, 500, and X3 for 15 plus years and they have so much experience with the Sage products. They're a market leader for shipping software automation and uh, with that I can move on to the next slide. And here's the workflow that we'll be discussing today. Uh, we're going to take the order from Magento. It's going to go through the e-link integration into Sage 100 and then from that Starship is going to take the order information and um, with all the rules in Starship, decide who's the best carrier for the shipment based on um, the cost, the location, um, all of the uh, details of the order. And that's going to send the tracking number and all the uh, shipping details back to Sage 100. And then the e-link is going to uh, connect to Magento and populate the Magento e-commerce suite with the uh, order information along with the tracking number and all the information that the customer would need to see on that side. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Nick. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, like Adrian said, we're going to be showing, demoing an end-to-end -end solution for e-commerce with uh, Sage 100 and Magento, and then uh, the shipping part of it is going to be done by Starship. Um, but before that, I just want to talk a little bit about our product, eLink. Um, what eLink is, is it is a JSON web API and it offers direct communications to Sage 100 from any connected business application. So um, the most common obviously is going to be uh, web storefronts such as Magento and Shopify, but uh, eLink can also be used for any other connected application you wanted to create. So say maybe a CRM or uh, custom reporting or anything like that. Um, we offer in the web API a bunch of endpoints. So we have endpoints for customers, for products, for um, inventory levels, for all of the custom customer pricing, uh, item categories, sales orders, invoices, and shipping and tracking information. Um, stop. <laughs> uh, so the one thing about eLink is eLink is a standalone product. It is not just for Magento. It works with any other uh, connected business application. We today are going to show you our Magento integration for eLink, um, which is the next slide. Uh, the Magento in integration, we actually use our own eLink, and then we create a Magento solution which synchronizes with Sage 100. So eLink offers direct access into Sage 100 real time. Um, our Magento integration that we've created and, and sell separately uh, creates a synchronized solution for Sage 100, which I'm going to show you today uh, very shortly. Um, so actually, let's start the demo now. So with our Magento integration, we offer both B2B and B2C solutions. The B2B solution, basically the only difference is the, I, the users are created inside of Sage 100. So we give you this web user maintenance window where you can create your 
web users and then associate them with customers. You can have as many web users as you need for each individual customer. So if a customer has multiple users that they want to be able to log in and see the invoicing or, or balance or create orders, then you can create multiple web users on here for that particular customer. Each web user can have some control as far as what they see. It's very basic though. So either they can view invoices or not view invoices or view balance or not view balance. Um, today I'm going to show you the B2C solution that we have um, because it's easier to go through the whole process and include Starships for the shipping and all of that. So let's close B2B and actually go to our B2C solution. So what I'm going to run through is I'm going to actually create an order as if I were a customer on the web. Um, we're going to wash that order, come into Sage 100. We're going to pass that order off to Caroline who will show you Starship and how that order is shipped. And then we're going to bring the, all of the information for that order back, including the tracking and invoice, to Magento. So we're going to go from end to end and show you the entire process. Here is our, just our default uh, template that we offer with our Magento solution. It is um, responsive, so it'll work on tablets and mobile devices. So if we have a mobile device, it will adjust for the mobile device. This template is an easy template out of the box that we offer. You can modify the logo and the colors and use it as is, or you could create your own Magento template and just use our, our modules inside of it. Um, on this, you're looking at uh, just a basic home page. The categories up here are coming from Sage 100. So the items have been imported into Magento from Sage 100, including all of the pricing, uh, the stock availability, uh, the categories, and the pictures. So we will go ahead and just add a couple of items to an order. We will start with a file drawer. I know these items have stock and can be shipped today, so we're going to go ahead and add these specific items. And we'll put a paper caddy in there too. So we are using the standard Magento checkout process. Um, you can view your shopping cart and then proceed to checkout just like in any other Magento website. And just like any other Magento website, we support all of the customer checkout options. So if you're a returning customer, you could put in your email address and password here um, to log into your account. It would pull all of your address information from Sage and allow you to select your shipping address and billing address based on, on what's coming from Sage. We also support guest checkout. Um, for guest checkout, it will create on, when the order is placed, it will create a one-time customer in Sage and import the order into that customer. Um, but there will be no, no ability to go check your account and check the order status and stuff like that. For today, I'm going to register and check out so we can show you the complete process where we create the customer in Sage and import the order into the customer and everything. And then we can come back and look at the order status in our account. So let's go ahead and register and check out now. Uh, I'm just going to send the order to myself because I like getting new things. Please don't send me spam mail. So uh, our address. Okay, so at the bottom, it's asking me to create a password for the account, so I'm just going to put in a simple password. And then we have the option to either ship to the same address that I just entered for billing, or we can enter a completely different address for shipping. For today, we're just going to ship to the same address. After that, it's going to ask you for your shipping method. These are all standard Magento modules, so if you had, you know, Magento plugins for UPS or FedEx or however you want to ship, uh, this will integrate just fine with them. We just set up fixed rate shipping for this. So I'm going to select fixed rate shipping. Um, we're going to pay by credit card, but we support any of the Magento payment modules. Um, feel free to copy this credit card and use it. 
I don't think it'll get much, but all right. So when you get all of your information put in, then you can see uh, the order uh, overview, so you can review it and make sure that everything's correct. If you want to make any changes here, you go go back and edit your cart and make your changes and come back. Um, once we place the order, we're going to get an email confirmation, which I can't show you right now, but you'll also get this confirmation page. The confirmation page has the web order number on it. The email also has the same web order. And if we go to our account and look under sales orders, we now have this pending sales order with the same web order number. What we've decided to do is do a queued system. So when you submit this order, it immediately it goes into a queue for immediate import into Sage. We do not directly import into Sage because what this gives us is if the Sage system happens to be down for maintenance or unavailable for any particular reason, uh, there's a disconnect between Sage and your website, the website can still take orders, it can still give confirmations out, um, and it can still, you know, you can still see the order status even if Sage wasn't available to import the order. But as soon as Sage is available, then the order will immediately be imported into Sage and the order will move from pending orders up here down to uh, actual accepted orders down here. So now you can see it was imported into Sage. This is the actual Sage order number. Uh, this is the original web order number that you saw in the confirmation. And if you wanted to, you could view the sales order status here um, with the status, uh, the customer number. This is the customer that was created in Sage and uh, all of the information. So let's look at that in Sage. Back in Sage, if we look at our sales orders, and that order number was 307. So we will just pull it up by number. So you can see the order was imported. A customer was created. If we go to customer maintenance, we can see all of the customer information, addresses, and the phone number. The email address is there also. That is the customer's user name on the website. Um, the address information for this particular order is here with the billing and shipping. And then all of our lines are here. So now this order is ready to ship. So to ship it, I'm going to go ahead and pass the control to Caroline, who will take the order and ship it for us. Great. Thanks, Nick. Can you see my screen okay? I can. Okay, cool. So um, after that order is brought into Sage 100 um, through the Certa Pro solution, we're going to go ahead and ship it. Um, you can just enter, scan, or browse for the order number, and Starship will go out to the Sage 100 database, pull all the information in, including header and line item information, and then allow you to ship this. So um, in the left-hand pane here, you're going to see just an overview of this particular order, um, the, the source information, the order, um, and the company that we're shipping from, how um, Starship translated the ship via as um, second day air in this case, um, the sender as well as the recipient. And here we also um, have the address validation. It looks like this is a, a valid address for us. Um, we're also going to, um, Starship does have its own email notification. Um, but in this case, I also have um, a Quantum View Notify set up to go for um, the salesperson that's associated to this order. Um, so this can be um, the actual salesperson inside of Sage. Um, or you can make this a fixed value if you'd like. Um, but the salesperson will get notified of the exceptions. So if for some reason the package is not going to make it in time, um, they can be proactive and provide the customer with an update and um, just provide that extra level of customer service. So in the bottom of this area here, you'll see um, sure. that we have the items packaged here. Um, Starship's actually utilizing what we call our packaging scenarios to um, automatically define um, how these are going to be boxed up. So if you use case packs or if you always have one-to-one -one scenarios, um, you can actually just have the items um, automatically packed so you can um, make the shipping process more efficient. I'm just going to process the shipments then and um, we're going to 
produce the barcoded shipping label, and then update stage 100. So we shipped against the order, and Starship will create the invoice as a result of that. Here's the, um, one of the labels that are going out. So this is what we call our smart label. It's a combination of the shipping label plus the packing list on an 8.5 by 11. Typically, the shipping label in this case is on a little die cut area. Um, Starship also supports printing the packing list directly to a thermal label printer and having this shipping label also print to thermal. And just so you know, these don't typically come up on screen like this. I'm just showing you this for demo purposes. So that's pretty, um, you know, that's as simple as it is to get the order shipped out. I wanted to show you a couple things before I pass it back over to Nick. Um, one of those would be the email notifications that you can um, have Starship generate for you. Um, so Starship can generate these on the fly and process these as you're shipping so that your customers can be notified um, as quickly as possible that it's actually been um, shipped out. And you can also include your own templates. Um, your templates can have custom fields that are pulling from Sage 100. So in this case, I have um, my PO number coming into um, my template here. I have the order number being defined as a reference, my ship to. And then down here, you'll have the package information as well as the items that were in that package. So they'll be able to see exactly um, what was shipped to them and the tracking number for that. Uh, and then you can also obviously put in your own marketing information here, try to send them back to your um, site for additional purchases. So on the Sage side, let me just show you what happened there from that order. I'm just going to um, open invoice data entry. I'm going to pull up the last invoice, which would be the invoice that Starship would have created as a result of shipping the sales order number 307 here. So if you look at the tracking information, you're going to see two packages with the tracking information for each of those, um, weights, freight charges. And then on the totals tab, Starship will update the freight amount here with um, the freight charges. Uh, Starship does um, reach out to the carriers to get your negotiated rate and also provides you with the list rate. So you can um, define rules based on you know, certain parameters, like for instance, if you have um, gold versus platinum customers and you want to give your platinum customers free shipping and gold, maybe you'll just give them 10% over your discounted rate, you can create those rules in Starship so that the freight amount is um, adjusted accordingly. Now, in this particular case, you notice that um, Nick had already paid $10 for the shipping. Um, so for your Magento orders, you can create a freight rule in Starship that says do not update the freight charge. And Starship basically just leaves the freight charge alone. Um, and then from there, you also have the Starship dashboard, um, which is just a browser-based way of accessing the shipping data. And you could um, you know, run reports on the actual shipping charges. Um, to you know, get your comparisons and do your audits with your bills there. Okay, I'm going to pass it back to Nick so he can take that invoice and um, send it back over to Magento and show you what that looks like. Thanks, Carolyn. All right, so now that our order has been shipped, let me get rid of this bouncing box on the bottom. Oh, I have to show my screen first. Okay, can you guys see my screen now? <laughs> okay, so now that the order has been shipped, um, Sage will, well, our Magento plugin will grab that information from Sage, and it should show up if we go look at our sales orders. Now we have uh, invoice information for this sales order. From the sales order list, we can actually click on the invoice and view the invoice directly, or we can go to our invoices list which will also show the sales order, the invoice, and all of the tracking information that was brought back. So from either list, you can get to the invoice. If we look at the invoice detail, we see all the same information we saw, but it will add the tracking numbers to the bottom. Um, from the actual invoice, if you want to go back and look at the sales order, say an item was back ordered, we can go back and look at the sales order and see you know, the back ordered items. And if there were multiple invoices shipped against the back order, then we could look at each invoice individually here as well. Um, I believe that is from the end to end. So I am going to go ahead and pass it back to Adrian. I just still want to thank, again, thank everybody for coming out and watching. Um, 
Adrian, you want to take, oh, you want to go to the slides. Okay, so Adrian. Yes, thank you so much, Nick and Caroline. Um, we do have several questions here, everybody. I do, um, I would be hopeful if I could launch a poll here for the audience to answer these couple polls that we're going to be launching. There's only two. So let me go ahead and launch those polls now. Are you interested in learning more about the Magento Sage 100 integration? And look, I spelt integration wrong. Little character there for you. And then let's see here. Timothy, thank you so much for this question. If you are pulling orders with Starship and not pushing orders from Sage, how do you handle backorder or dropship items? Hey, this is Caroline. So I guess I really didn't go into too much detail and show you all the item functionality from this. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that because you're saying pushing orders, you might be using the Starship link from shipping data entry. Um, the interface that I'm showing you today is what we call our BOI interface. It uses the BOI architecture to access the data direct, so the order can initiate from the Starship screen. Um, once you're in the Starship screen, you can um, select an item and just change the um, shipped quantity. By default, the shipped quantity will um, be set um, as equal to the ordered quantity, which is basically shipping complete. Um, but if you modify that, so let's just say you had um, 10 ordered and you can only ship nine, uh, Starship would back order that one remaining quantity when it creates the invoice. And we have another question here. Does the order get checks checked against Sage credit limits? Thank you, Martin. Um, yeah, we are also using the um, BOI for importing the orders. So it will go through all of the checks as if the order was put in directly into Sage. And is it possible to have the web check checkout use Starship to calculate freight charges? Hey, Adrian. Uh huh. Was that a question to me because I just um, got off of the line and I just logged back in? Can you? Oh, no problem. Repeat, please. Sure. Is it possible to have the web checkout use Starship to calculate freight charges? Um, you know, we do actually have. Um, if you're familiar with Starship and um, Sage, how we have the rate quote functionality from sales order, um, that's actually an integration that we developed using our own rate, um, rating API component. Um, so that is possible, but there would have to be some development done in order for you to um, get to that point. And thank you, Sean, for that question. Uh, can an existing order be modified in Magento? Thank you, Bob. Um, not currently. That would require customization as well. All modifications would have to be done in Sage. And it will import back into Magento. And um, Alex, thank you for this question. Do we need eBusiness web services? Can you repeat that question? Um, the question is, uh, if they're asking if they have to have e-business web services to use this Magento integration. No, uh, we are a standalone product. So you, it, with the Magento integration, you would need our e-link uh, web API. And how does it handle credit card processing? Does it connect to Sage Exchange, Sage Payment Solutions? I'm going to let Andy answer this question. Yeah, with the with the credit card, uh, Magento has a lot of plugins. If you would, I mean, Sage Payment Solution also has a plugin available that could be used as a module and integrate with the system. But then we have to also define if you're using the Sage Payment Solution internally, then uh, the, the information needs to be downloaded to the Sage. So it could be done. Yes. Okay. So seems like the order is entered in eLink, e not Magento. Is eLink and Magento integrated together where customer where the customer places the order in Magento and it will automatically integrate to eLink? Thank you, Christine. Yeah, so uh, Magento is uh, Magento integration that we have created is using our eLink and as soon as the order is placed on the web, it goes through eLink and it creates an order inside Sage 100. 
And I just wanted to remind the audience, I do have our second and last poll up. If you could just take a minute to answer this question, that would be awesome. Thank you. And then we have another question from Alex. Thank you, Alex. Can it do recurring billing subscriptions? Recurring billing subscriptions in regards to? So I would think that Alex is referring to, can you automate Magento to take an order, and if it's like a subscription order, repeat that billing in Sage, I guess. That's, Alex, if you can clarify that, because um, that, I believe that could happen in Sage, but um, Andy, do you want to take that one? Uh, we uh, Right now, our integration doesn't support any recurring billing. Okay, so uh, Bob, thank you so much. Magento offers credit card, PayPal, and other payment methods. How is that configured to pass it into Sage 100 with, appro with appropriate payment types? Well, if you use uh, other type of credit card modules that uh, the Sage internally doesn't support, then uh, what the people are usually doing, they're basically getting the payment on the web and doing a pre-authorization, and then the order gets downloaded to Sage uh, with the with the with the deposit method of let's say a payment and the deposit amount, but then they have to settle the transaction separately from Sage. And Dimitri, uh, thank you for this question. What does RMA support look like? Um, the question is, any RMA support? Uh, we currently do not have an RMA support, but it's in our pipeline. So hopefully by the end of the year, we will have an RMA support for the B2B customers primarily, and then we may also uh, launch it for the B2C customers as well. And Alex, thank you again for your question. Um, can we get a recording of the webinar? Yes, I will be sending out a recording along with all the contact information of both Starship and uh, the e-link. So you will be getting a follow-up email uh, shortly after the webinar today. Um, and then Alex, um, I think you're referring to your previous question here about uh, recurring billing. And Alex is saying it's a Sage module. So um, I just wanted to run that past you, Andy. Do you have anything further there? No, no. I mean, as far as the Magento part, uh, the recurring billing, this is an integration uh, just to get the orders and push it to Sage. Uh, with the B2B solution, we have a little bit of extensive functionality as far as like it brings back the customer level pricing uh, as if you're shopping inside Sage directly. But as far as the recurring billing, if I understand the question correctly, and at, at this point, we do not have anything that we can offer for Magento. So um, just hypothetically, so a Sage order could come into to, um, our Magento order can come into Sage. And if the user <clears throat> goes into Sage, they could set up recurring billing for that order right in Sage, um, but they'd have to do that manually. Yeah, right. yeah, that okay. would be the standard functionality of Sage 100, yeah. Okay. So is this integration bi-directional between Sage and Magento? Thank you, Mabel. Yes, it is. So uh, when, when you place an order, uh, it pushes to the Sage, and then uh, after that, as you've seen, it's like we created an invoice, and then invoice information came back and showed the, with the tracking number back on Magento. The items are also uh, our items and the customer information and the customer pricing and the inventory levels are also synchronizable. So as soon as you change something in Sage, it populates uh, Magento automatically. Like if you create a new part number inside your Sage 100 and you want that to show on the web, uh, you can have a plug on it and then it will pop up in the Magento. Also, if you create orders directly in Sage, they will show up under their customer's account in Magento. Yeah, if this is like a B2B situation where you're taking the phone orders uh, as, far as, as well as the, the, your customers are entering uh, web orders through Magento, 
then they could see both orders for their account. They could see the orders that have been placed through Magento, or they could also see the orders that have been directly entered inside Sage 100. And where does the e-link software reside? Is this local or hosted? Thank you, Timothy. Um, yeah, it's actually going to be installed on a Sage 100. It's not hosted system, no. You don't have to pay any hosting fees for that. And <clears throat> how long for you? How long does it take to set up B2B website and the whole process? And what is the merchant you use? Um, to set up the B2B, if you would just use our uh, standard template, it could take from uh, between like two weeks to three weeks uh, just to basically get everything connected properly, uh, have all your firewalls configured properly. Uh, at this point, in regards to the credit card, uh, there is, uh, I mean, from, from each account, everybody is using their own credit card integration. We will be offering the uh, Sage Payment Solution integration from end to end, like meaning like you will be able to place an order on a Sage Payment Solution, and they will download that into the Sage uh, Sage 100, assuming that they're using a Sage Payment Solution internally. And uh, just to remind the audience, we do have this last poll up here. I see some of you have not answered yet. 82% of you have voted. Thank you very much. I just wanted to remind you that it's up. And if you could take a minute to vote, that would be great. Um, and then we have a question here. How are kits handled? Does Magento mirror Sage 100 functionality for exploding, not exploding? Which shows in any yeah, it shows as an individual item. So, uh, yeah, if, if it's a kit, it will show as an individual item. Then they will be able to place an order for those items. And if an order is back ordered Sage in Sage 100, does it show as up as back ordered on the web order history? Yes. Thank you, Sean. Yes, that's true. We have an order status. Um, uh, do, do the people see our screen? Yeah, on the order, uh, on the order, like when you go to the order, the order status is going to be open, and then it could turn into the back order or it can turn into the close. So when an order is in back order, we have an order status that are showing uh, right when you drill into the order that it's a back order, and then we show an associated invoice with it with the tracking numbers and everything. Is the API hosted by you, or is it an extension of our Magento, or hosted on the Sage server? Thank you, Martin. So eLink is uh, eLink is a module that needs to be installed on Sage 100, and then there is another module for say for Magento that gets installed on the Magento. So those uh, two modules talk to each other and then communicate with Sage 100 within Magento. So it's and not a hosted system, so we're not hosting it, so it gets installed on the client server. And we have quite a few more questions. Thank you, everybody, for your interest in asking these questions. Caroline, this one is for you. Uh, thank you, Christine. How does Starship handle <clears throat> partial payment if we have an order for five units but only three units in stock? Um, well, if you bring the order into Starship, um, it's going to use the order quantity as um, the quantity to ship. If you um, then find that you only have three on your shelves to actually ship, you would go into Starship and modify the ship quantity from five to three. And then those additional two that you weren't able to ship would then be back ordered on the invoice. And we have a question from Matt. Does the integration support sales order, accounts receivable, UDF during sync? Uh, the UDFs uh, could be supported, but it's going to be changed from client to client. So if you're, if you're going to get uh, our e-link and you have a special requirement, we as a developer partner, we can customize that for you as we created this from the scratch. And uh, 
and then you your system will support the UDS. But it has to be pretty much you create the UDF, you tell us the name, and we support it because UDF can have different names out of the box. We don't know which UDF is going to be used and what the name is going to be, what the type of that field is going to be. So out of the box, the UDF is not supported. But as soon as you create a new UDF, then we can put that into your system. And then um, just to to add to that, I mean, if you have UDFs um, that were created through um, the eLink solution when you create the Sage 100 um, document, those would also be available to you from the Starship perspective. So if you wanted to pull those in to either print on the email or to print on your labels or your packing list, you could do that. And then um, is the e-link integration with Sage, does it stop at the sales order? Can it extend to the purchase order? Thank you, Christine. Yes, that's true. Like as we as we go through this process, the e-link is out there for almost two and a half years and uh, we we've been adding functionalities into it from the day first and uh, if there is a requirement we will definitely create that in there. It's extensible to any any objects uh, that you would be interested in communicating with Sage 100. So it and, right oh, go ahead. Yeah, right now it's mainly the customer's pricing, inventory level, inventory pricing by customer and all that information. but. Uh, but it could be extended to have also purchase orders, uh, vendors, and other objects. And we have a question from Mr. Bindra. Thank you. Um, where does the software install, and what is the price? Uh, the software, as far as the e-link, gets installed in the Sage server. And then regarding the pricing, uh, we have uh, contact information here. Please contact EDDS, our director of sales, and he'll be able to help you with the pricing. And I'll put that contact information up. We are at 94% voted. So um, if we can get to 100%, that would be great. But I'll put the contact information up um, right after this next question. Will eLink push the, J, uh, the JPEG images from inventory maintenance up to Magento? Thank you, Bob. Yeah, that's true. You can use uh, Sage images, but uh, most of the time uh, what happens is uh, we have a way of synchronizing your product into Magento, and we can have it to turn up synchronization only to update the inventory level and, uh, and the pricing. Because a lot of places that when they implement Magento, they would like to have their own description. They would like to have multiple images. The images out of the box from Sage, we synchronize it to Magento. But uh, you can go and change and update or put more pictures into Magento for items. And if Magento is hosted on an external server and Sage is running in-house behind firewalls, does the web server need to be able to directly access the Sage machine, or will everything work fine as long as the Sage machine can access the Magento server? Um, you, we would have to uh, work with the network administrator to uh, open ports through the firewall so that we could actually access the API on the Sage server. So it, it's not a, it's not connecting out. It's you, you do have to connect into the Sage server. And we have another question from Mr. Bindra. Thank you so much. Can this link be installed by resellers or can it be or does it have to be done by you only? Well, the resellers have to come up on the speed as far as what the installation is going to be. Uh, right now, we're the ones who are actually installing and when we do the installation, a lot of time resellers are shadowing us with the installation. So like in the next ones, maybe they, they'll be able to do it. And, you know, for things like that recurring billing and other SAGE inherent um, expertise, they're always, it's always great to have your reseller shadowing you for, you know, ex anything external that might relate to this, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So are, are or can the product descriptions in Magento be different than in SAGE? 
Yes, so when you do the initial syncing, you can push uh, all of your products from Sage to Magento to streamline the process of uh, creating the items inside Magento. Then you have an option inside the Magento module to tell don't update the product descriptions from Sage anymore. Uh, and then you have an option inside Magento to uh, put your own description, meta, dis meta description, meta titles. So this will not get overwritten by Sage than in the next thing. So these are all optional and the answer is yes. And can product information be imported into Sage from Magento? Thank you, Mabel. Yes, I think I believe I just answered to that no. question. No, okay. can you add items in Magento and have it? Oh, no, when you're adding an item inside Magento, it doesn't push to Sage, no. Okay. And um, what level of encryp encryption is used in the bridge between Magento and Sage? I mean, we're using uh, standard HTTPS protocols, and then we're using uh, private and public key hashing for the, the connection between the two. So it's all uh, industry standard right now. Did we lose you? Hey guys, I think Adrian oh, dropped off. Sorry, I oh, put myself on mute for a second. We have an IT question. <laughs> we have an IT question. What security pro protocols are used? Is the data transmitted in clear text or is it encrypted? It is encrypted. Perfect. Well, it looks like that's all for the questions. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Please uh, feel free to ask at this time by clicking on that question mark button right next to your name on the webinar pane. If you'd like to add a question here, we would be happy to announce it. Um, if there are no further questions, thank you so much for spending an hour with us. When it's under an hour, it looks like we came in 18 minutes early. We wanted to reserve plenty of time for questions. So if there are no other questions, just thank you. Um, and uh, would you guys like to close out with anything, Caroline or Nick? No, I think you said it, Adrian. Thanks for um, hanging out um, with us for an hour. I just noticed our website on the uh, contact information slide is just spelt wrong. So use the uh, spelling that's in Eddie's email address. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> There's no spell check on uh, websites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it autocorrect would have been very much worse. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, well, we will be in touch with you with a follow-up email shortly. And uh, thanks again, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, guys. That was good. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.